that they are living with HIV as individuals spreading the virus which is resulting in the increasing infections recorded for the year of 2022. They say the target, the 2030 target of eradicating HIV is now in jeopardy. We get details for you shortly. Also this afternoon, National Labor Commission meets striking physician assistants and colleges of education teachers where they are industrial action impacting negatively on health and education. Concerned youth of Asawasi reject Interior Minister Ambrose Derry's account of event leading to the death of a youth in the area. Meanwhile, the MP for the area, Mohamed Munteka Mubarak, is demanding a probe into the issue. And much later, we'll preview our latest documentary highlighting how young girls in rural communities struggle to afford sanitary towels during many we have details if you stay with us for the next 30 minutes. A pleasure that you could be a part of this afternoon's bulletin. It's streaming live on Facebook uh, on 3FM927. Same handles on Twitter as well, 3FM927. Also up ahead, six persons feared dead in a ghastly accident on the Kumasi Tichiman Highway. It will be there shortly to provide details for you if you stay with us here on 3FM92.7. Well, we're starting on the front of health uh, this afternoon where the Ghana AIDS Commission says that the over 100 persons who are unaware they are leaving or they are living with HIV are responsible for the surge in new infections. Director General of the Commission, Dr. Chirme Chiahene, doubts Ghana would meet its 2030 target of eradicating HIV sport during the dissemination of the 2022 national and subnational HIV estimates and projections for the year 2020. We still have about 28% uh, of people living with HIV in Ghana who do not know their HIV status. And they are the ones spreading the virus because they don't know and they are spreading it unknowingly. And so it is important that you get to know your HIV status. That is why men especially should test. Young people should test. Women at risk should test. We all have to know our HIV status. It's better to know it early so that if there must be any intervention, you can have it at a time when you are strong and you can have better treatment or good treatment outcome. This is highly undesirable because we will want to see a much sharper decline, a much steeper decline for us to achieve epidemic control by the year 2030. But as it looks, uh, it is not promising at all. You can see that by 2030, we would achieve the 95-95 targets, which is meant for 2025. By 2030, we should achieve 98-98 targets which means we are currently lagging behind and based on the current data we are unlikely to achieve the the target by 2030. That's the Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission, Dr. Chirme Tiahene, there speaking uh, during the dissemination of the 2022 national and subnational HIV estimate and projections in the capital. Let's get on the telephone lines now and engage Director Technical Services at the Ghana AIDS Commission, Dr. Fred Nanapoku, for a bit more on uh, this. Uh, Dr. Nanapoku, many thanks for speaking to us. So, uh, just 
ending that voice clip, Dr. Chirame Chiahene expressed doubt as to Ghana being able to eradicate HIV by the 2030 target. A number of reasons have been prescribed to it. One of uh, it being that over 100,000 persons are currently living with the virus and are unaware. Is that solely the reason why perhaps we cannot meet that 2030 target? Um, not so. Not That is not the only reason why uh, uh, we might not meet the target. Um, because there are other factors. You see, the hundred over 100,000 people who do not even know their status, they are not conscious of the fact that having unprotected sex or even sharing shafts with other people can lead to they transmitting the virus. They are also not on medication to suppress the virus so that they reach the U equals to U state where undetectable equals untransmittable because they are not even on medication. They don't even know. So they pose a big, huge challenge to that. Apart from that, our own health seeking behaviors not also contribute to us not reaching the target. We need to protect ourselves because as these people already don't even know, more people are getting infected. Mm. We realized that in, 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 in the 2020 report as had been released, more than 16,500 new infections occurred. This is a slight reduction from the previous year. Mm. But this is unacceptable. It's so high. But, but so high. with the 100,000, that's quite a number, and will be leading to uh, the spread and new infections. Is there something that is being done? Because I recall when the report for 2021 came up as well, there was quite a huge number of persons who were living with the virus who were unaware. That appears to be the biggest challenge, isn't it? It's one of the challenges. It's one of the challenges. That is why we're trying to reach out to as many people as possible to test and know their status. That is why we are trying, we are looking at new innovations globally and replicating it locally in Ghana. That is why we have tried to introduce the HIV self-testing so that those categories of people who do not want to go to the facility to test, who do not want to be reached through our outreach programs to test, can by themselves initiate the testing and verification processes by testing themselves in their own convenient homes or whatever environment they seems, uh, it seems uh, or appears conducive for them, they test and then depending upon the status, if their status is reactive, they proceed to, to verify and, and confirm their status at the health facility. Mm -hmm. So we are all we're looking at all the possible avenues. We're trying to roll out this HIV self-testing to every corner of the country. Right. But now, currently, we know it is available uh, to uh, the, the, the website, uh, free for people who are able to access it, especially those in Accra, Tema. And then we have in-person distribution through the CSOs uh, at various districts uh, across the country. So we, we're making all efforts to ensure that people get to know their status, mm. be on the medication so they don't spread the virus. Just, just they, they have our protected mm, Just yeah. finally, on a breakdown of the numbers, it, it continues to appear that a lot more females uh, are a part of uh, newly infected as compared to males. That appears to be the trajectory more often than not. Is there an explanation or a reason why it appears a lot more females are contracting uh, the virus as compared to males? Yes, um, there, there, there are no known factors for that. And others are also compounded by uh, the existing circumstances they found themselves in. First of all, we know that it's easier, in quote, anatomically and physiologically for, for the virus to be transmitted uh, to, 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 to females than males. Bearing that, we have other socioeconomic factors 
that 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 pushes, especially in our environment, that pushes uh, ladies to 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 get more infected easily, uh, where they have transactional sex some of sometimes, where they, they they because of poverty they engage in so many other things mm. and uh, things like that, and they, they're not and the power play in terms of uh, of uh, of uh, of. Uh, 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 power dynamics when it comes to uh, negotiating for sex and everything like that. When a man decides to use condoms, for example, he easily goes and uses it. But when a lady, a lady wants to use condom as protection, she has to seek and get the approval invariably from, from, from the man before the, that occurs. And most of the times, uh, if the man doesn't want to use it, then it, 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 she, she, she's at the receiving end. Right. So these are some of the factors that make them more prone to, to, to getting the virus, apart from what I've already initiated and said about the anatomical and other considerations as it is. Right then, Doc. I, I appreciate that you could speak to us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you and all the best. And Thanks so much. Right, that's Dr. Fred Anapoku. He's a director of technical services at the Ghana AIDS Commission. And we're taking you to the Ashanti region. I mentioned there's been an accident. We'll get details on that uh, for you shortly. But uh, quite seeming and brewing uh, tension in the business districts of Kumasi in relation to the ban on the use of tricycles. Ibrahim Abubakar uh, has been there for us. He's been monitoring the situation. Yesterday, the authorities in Kumasi began enforcing that ban, led to arrests of some individuals and operators. Today, the indication we get is that these tricycle operators have mounted a roadblock. Uh, Ibrahim, talk to us exactly what's happening. We have Mona, and uh, the place is getting chaotic now. And the stretch from from around about heading towards Sejia, the riders have blocked the main road, and they are saying that since the authorities have decided not to allow them have access to the central business district, then they will not also allow any vehicle to move from this stretch to the central business district. So they have um, used most of the. Um, um, concrete blocks that have been used as, as pavement to block the main road. So as we see, hundreds of vehicles have been stuck at the back. They are on the road to access to the central business district or move from the central business side of Bracebox to the other the, the various destinations. A number of police personnel have arrived at the scene, but um, they are trying to dialogue with their leadership. They don't want to start firing any short yet, the commander has told everybody to hold on fire. They want to dialogue with them, make sure that all of them move from the roadside, open up the road for vehicles to be able to access. I'm, I'm hearing some of the youth mm. saying that they should move towards KFA and also um, show their grievances to the city authority that uh, they are still resisting this attempt prevent them from operating within the central business. And, and where is the police in all of this, the great lock situation that you're talking to us about? So uh, this is um, the stretch from Kwameran about two, two KJTR. Um, that's the zone stretch um, close to Bracefort. So this is one of the biggest roads in Kumasi. And the great lock, in fact, I've seen that a lot of um, passengers are putting down their vehicles, walking towards to the Swamiran about where they will be have they will be able to have vehicles to access their various destinations. And so, just for listeners uh, who may not really be aware of the situation, just remind us again why it is that these tricycles have been banned and they cannot operate in the central business district. Well, the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly said as part of a uh, strategy to sanitize the road and also decongest the central business district, they have decided to do it in phases. First of all, they are banning all tricycle operators from conducting any activity within the central business district. Um, even though they know that the activity as we speak now is illegal because uh, the road um, and regulations laws um, no tricycle is supposed to conduct any commercial activity. But 
they have decided that well, they will allow them to do so, but those should be done um, outkept the central business district. They are saying that after the tricycle, they will move on to taxis and also trotters um, that have congested the area. So they will be doing it in phases. But the riders are also saying that no, they will not allow themselves to be moved out because as soon as they go, they wouldn't have any places to conduct their activities. Right. And also since we have some vehicles that are being granted access to the city, the same should be done with them with tickets so that we will know the number of tricycles that will have access to the CBC rather than telling all of them not to come at all. Right. Ibrahim, I'll ask you to hold the line for us because you'll be providing details again in relation to concerns raised by youth of Asawasi in relation to explanations offered yesterday by the Interior Minister Ambrose Derry on accounts leading to the death of a youth in the area. Let's just take a listen to exactly what it is that Ambrose Derry said on the floor of Parliament and then you've been interacting with the youth group. You give us details. But note in this statement that we have also emphasized that we are doing an investigation of the police officers who were under oppression. Why? To make sure that they did things professionally. Mr. Speaker, this report is honest in that it has brought out the verbal report of the pathologist. It has not tried to hide anything and has also stated that the team gave an explanation. We have to find out whether the explanations are valid or not. Do we allow cases to die? This leadership of the police have established a cold cases case. And most of you were surprised recently that an earlier incident of some officers who were killed at Gapoha years ago have come up with some arrest being effected. So that's Ambrose Derry speaking in relation to uh, that incident uh, of the death of Yusuf's Salahuddin alias Sheila, the, the youth in the Zango community, as I want to be specific, you've been interacting with them and they seem to disagree with the minister quite strongly. Well, Mauna, um, they are angry, they disagree with the account presented by the interior minister because they are saying there were a lot of eyewitnesses who witnessed uh, that event and they have also presented their account. They didn't understand why the interior minister will just present a different account from what was said as the ground. And even worse is that the interior minister has indicated that investigation is still ongoing. So for him to come out and give this account, it means the investigation uh, will come to nothing. And um, they were even questioning since when did it become a norm for the police to arrest a suspect and also release the person just because the person is showing symptoms of sickness. When the police would rather send the person to the hospital, make sure the person is better and proceed with whatever they want to um, continue. I engage with the um, convener of the um, concerned youth of Asawasi, Umbara Hari. When the incident happened, there were people who were there, eyewitness, they saw what happened, and they gave account of what happened. And if today you are telling us that the testimony of the people who were there, present, to witness what happened are all lies, but somebody can just go and cook up a story and then come and put up a defense to this wickedness by some of the elements in the police service, then I find it very unfortunate. I do not understand the reason why. Since when did it become a norm that the police would arrest a suspect and upon detecting that the suspect is showing signs of illness, then they would just release the suspect just like that. Since when did it become a norm? And how is it possible that a suspect who has been arrested, whom you claim hits himself against a wall, suddenly had an abdominal, I mean, bleeding? Look at the, when the autopsy report, was, was brought out. We saw the series of injuries that the guy, the young man, um, I mean, sustained. So when you look at what the interior minister came to read, based on the information presented to him by the police, it doesn't reflect the realities on the ground.
So the concerned youth there are speaking. Let's just stay in the Ashanti region. Uh, a while long, uh, rather unfortunate news where reports were picking indicate that at least six at least six people have been reported dead in a ghastly accident on the Kumasi Tichiman Highway. The accident, which included a VIP bus and a trailer truck, occurred at in Kenkasu in the Ashanti region at dawn uh, today. Driver of the uh, VIP bus, uh, according to eyewitness, veered off its lane and collided uh, with the truck. The bus with registration number AP198622 was heading towards uh, Tichiman whilst the truck was loaded with cereals and was coming towards Kumasi. The injured have been sent to the Nkenkasu uh, Government Hospital uh, for treatment and we'll get updates for you if you stay with us here on 3FM 92.7. A bit ahead though, we'll preview our latest documentary highlighting how young girls in rural communities continue to struggle with providing or gaining access to uh, sanitary towels during men menstruation. I sorry, I my But for now, though, let's do labour because a series of meetings are being held by the National Labour Commission. First off, with a striking physician assistant. Uh, in an attempt to come to a compromise over the health workers' decision to lay down their tools. The strike, which is in its second week, is having a toll on healthcare delivery in several public health facilities across the country. And the Ghana Health Service has been forced to issue a directive or a memo to doctors across the country to uh, cut short leaves and other forms of vacations and special arrangements made at work to ensure that they can shore up the numbers at the hospitals to provide care. In relation, or also at the National Labour Commission, they are also scheduled to meet the leadership of the Colleges of Education Teachers Association, also in relation to the industrial action as well, and it's a broad academic work in the various colleges of education to a halt and Labour Affairs correspondent Daniel Opoku will join us on the telephone lines with a bit more details as to exactly what it is that has been happening at those various meetings. But while we wait, let's talk Emancipation Day because President Kufado, he says that uh, European nations ought to pay reparations to Africa for the damage uh, brought by the historic slave trade. He made the call uh, during a debut to commemorate the 25th Emancipation Day at Asen Manso uh, yesterday. It allows us also to use this occasion to renew our demand for reparations. Ghana has been given the honor by the African Union to organize a conference in October bringing together Africans all over the world to reflect and push forward our demand for reparation. People can be compensated, in quotes, for the Holocaust. Africans can be compensated for slavery. But above all, this day enables us to celebrate freedom. And for us, to celebrate our freedom, and our independence and sovereignty, to renew our pledge, which we find in our national anthem, that we will resist oppressors' rule with all our will and all our might. So Nana, Omahe, the country, Ghana, the African Commonwealth, thanks you and your ancestors for instituting this day and for insisting on it every year. That's President Kufaro. Return to the series of meetings at the National Labour Commission. Daniel Opoku is our Labour Affairs correspondent. Let's just get quick details from him. Uh, Danny, do we know if the meeting with a physician assistant has started and what possibly we've gleaned from it? Hello, Governor. Yes, uh, Danny, I'm asking for a possible updates from the meeting with the physician assistant. Right, so currently the National Labour Commission is in a meeting with the leadership of uh, CITAC, 
And after Sister, that's when you had a petition assistance coming in. Um, you took your recall because of the concerns raised by Sita. Is the reason it has been summoned by the National Labor Party. So the meeting is in three four. You have the first one, which is focusing on Sita and the National Labor Commission. The second one is by the petition assistance of the National Labor Commission. And the third one is organized labor to the National Labor Commission and the management of Southern and Southern. So these are the three major meetings that the Labor Commission is sitting on today. Uh, right then, uh, many thanks. Dan Lepoku, uh, Labour Affairs correspondent, will touch base with him uh, much later uh, with a bit more details. But news just in as well. The Attorney General has been offering advice uh, towards the case brought by Cecilia Dapa and her husband over some missing cash from her home. Uh, stay, 3news.com will give, you, will give you details of that quite a lengthy document where they state amongst many things the fact of the case and on face value alone we're beginning to see an amendment to some of the quoted sums in the original charge sheet and allusions to some 800,000 US dollars as well being monies uh, for the brother of uh, the deceased brother of Cecilia Abnadapa will provide details for you subsequently. To our latest assignment, and sanitary parts are a necessity for women and girls across the world, and Ghana is no exception. However, despite their importance, many women and girls in Ghana, especially in rural areas, still struggle to afford them due to their high cost partly attributed to the luxury tax on the product. In Gordon Zasidiba's latest documentary titled My Period is Not a Shame, he tells a heartbreaking story of girls in Kokroko in the Tichiman North constituency using rags to take care of their period flow. Using rags as what they are used to. Benegisa Boatima is one of the girls in the Kokoko basic school and I've been told she's not been able to come to school today because she's in her menstruation period. I've been trekking for God knows how many minutes and I'm still trekking to meet her. I'm sorry, 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 i am sorry i am a village in the Techima North constituency. I'm used to my be seven years. My mom dem used to aya and so go my ham. Me my used to a nono. The inability to afford menstrual products here is causing girls to stay home from school, with long-term consequences on their educational performance. The stories were different, and one of it has to do with they have to having a sexual relationship with um, guys to be able to solve that particular problem within that particular month. And then even it has become a sort of a bargaining a chip for the guys, knowing that that is the pressing needs of these uh, girls. So they think that when, when they use that as a means of getting their attention, they are able to buy into it. Not being able to use sanitary parts makes it harder for women and young girls here to manage their periods safely and with dignity. Menstruation is a natural phenomenon, but cultural and political factors make it only the woman and girl's burden. It has been mystified, commercialized, and used as tools of oppression in many societies, even today. And as females in most societies face many challenges, including gender discrimination, they also have to deal with mysteries and misconceptions that a natural occurrence like menstruation comes with, even though all gender are beneficiaries of menstruation. But a non-governmental organization called Amazing Girls Foundation has introduced an innovation in the sanitary part sector that has the propensity to have a long-lasting positive impact on women and girls, especially those in rural areas. And these are some of the sanitary parts that they do make here. 
Gordon Nasiriba with that uh, latest documentary. Catch it much later this evening at 9 p.m. That's our bulletin for you this afternoon. A lot more news if you log on to 3news.com. Bismarck is here ready and waiting with the very latest from the world of business. I am Eric Mawina Egbeta. Forever Lifestyle Radio. are a major stakeholder in nation building. Your voice matters. Start your day with us. To simplify the conversations, to break down the jargons and technicalities, to keep you well informed throughout the week. Start your day with us. No. Ghana, Ghana's over 60 billion cities laws described as entire financial system breakdown. Also, Cocoa Board revises deadline for debt exchange program to August 3. We'll bring you details of these headlines and many others shortly. Thank you. Thanks for staying. To our very first story, Director of Academic Planning and Quality Control at Gimpa Business School, Dr. Bugri Anafo says, the Bank of Ghana's loss of over 60 billion cities is an indication that the country's entire financial system is broken down. According to him, the development will have dire consequences on the economy. An annual report and financial statements of the central bank revealed that the regulator recorded a loss of 60.86 billion cities in 2022. This is a sign that there is a problem with the entire financial system or such a loss can only occur when there's a breakdown of the entire financial system. This loss has a negative impact on the economy. The prestige of the central bank and its authority is lost and that will reduce their ability to be able to supervise the financial system. It will also reduce the effectiveness of monetary policy uh, of the central bank. And also a loss will also mean that more money or more liquidity is injected into the, uh, into the system. And this has the tendency of increasing uh, the rate of inflation and also the depreciation of the currency. To some other story, the Ghana Cocoa Board has revised the deadline for its debt exchange program to August 3 from the initial announcement of August 4 this year. This, the board explains, is in compliance with the directive regarding the observation of August 4 as a statutory public holiday. The following business desk report has more. The Ghana Cocoa Board launched a debt securities exchange program that is to exchange cocoa bills for a longer term debt security. Notwithstanding the invitation to exchange eligible bills for the new bonds, Cocoa Board, in its sole discretion, says it may settle the eligible bills in full or in part, and the eligible holder's subscription to receive new bonds is voluntary. According to the board, participation in the invitation to exchange is, however, voluntary. Cocoa Board says eligible holders whose validity submitted offers are accepted will receive on the settlement date the new bonds with an aggregate principal amount rounded down to the nearest one CD equal to the principal amount of eligible bills tended plus accrued interest payable. It says aggregate principal amounts will be allocated in accordance with the consideration ratios described in the new bonds and exchange consideration per principal amount of eligible bills tended. That was a business desk report. To some other story, with the negative impact of the domestic debt exchange program on the financial sector, 
industry players believe it presents an opportunity for banks to diversify their operations. Country representative of the Ghana International Bank, Bafo Ohene Abankwa, stated that the development will compel banks to innovate and churn out products that will enable them to thrive. He spoke to the media on the sidelines of a training seminar organized by his outfit on risk assessment. Whenever any particular risk crystallizes, one of the effects is, is a loss in, in profitability or revenue, however you look at it. And so I think that there are lessons that the banks have learned. Um, there are lessons that all stakeholders have learned. And um, we would expect that those would be begin to feature um, in, in, in how banks um, implement strategy and how they manage their balance sheets and what banks invest in going forward. I think what it will also bring out is the, the tenacity of the banks. When you think you've run out of options, you, you go back to the drawing table, you think. So um, yes, we've seen the impact, but I think that there are going to be um, things that will come out of this and what products and services that we probably do not see today will come into effect as we are forced to become more creative with what to do with the funds we manage. This is still Business Daily with me, Bismarck Aousa, to some other story. With Ghana's housing deficit at concerning levels, players in the built industry believe prefabricated homes may be solution. They, however, insist tax incentive will be critical to ensuring the success of the building option. Sarah Corti is a marketing expert in the built industry. It's cost effective because the building are made of good materials that lasts a lifetime. In addition, it is cheaper than bricks and mortar building. The government can use it for its affordable housing. And this would motivate more people who could afford to build on their own. It is imported from, the product is imported from China. And when the government gives tax rebates, it ultimately affects the price of the product. And that was the voice of Sarah Corti, a marketing expert in the built industry. Energy strategist and CEO of Eureka Energy Solutions, Dr. Yusuf Suleimana has observed government has failed to utilize the Energy Sector Levy Act, ESLA, for its intended purpose, including settling debts owed independent power producers. In his mid-year budget review, Finance Minister Ken Oferiata insisted government is engaging the independent power producers, IPPs, on debt relief and financing arrangements. The IPPs are threatening to shut down their power plants. Let's hear from Dr. Yusuf Suleimana. We diverted it. I mean, they were not channeled to the right side. What I thought was that, I mean, we just mentioned in the budget, is to come back to, to stay on course, uh, to go by the word and letter of the cash water mechanism. So if you had actually uh, worked with it, I don't think we would have find ourselves where we are, where we have accumulated almost closer to uh, $2 billion over the period. And with even the IPPs agitating for almost two months, we, are, we haven't been able to put something substantial on, on the table in terms of what we can give them. It was set up to be able to be deliberate in whatever money that is accrued, you know, it is channeled to a key utility point, and one of them is to make payment. And so over the time, I think, this was quashed. I mean, the functionality of the price water mechanism was deactivated in a way, or monies were being reused or reassigned, and that was a dangerous thing. And so, if the budget is saying they want to come back, then that, that's the right way to go. And that was Dr. Yusuf Suleimana, energy strategist and CEO of Eureka Energy Solutions, ending business daily with me, Bismarck Ausa. For more news, you can log on to 3news.com. Thanks for staying.